Born or not. I never really pronounced Born or not. Just say, it, That's it, just say German. Say German, Schmidt. Born to Naro. Born to Naro? Yes. That's super easy. Yeah. Born to Naro. Okay. Super easy. Okay, welcome everyone. We are here with our next episode for our Azure Stack Partner Solution videos. And again, I'm here with Tiberiu Radu, who is a Principal Program Manager at the Edge Solution Team to talk about different partner solutions. Uh, hi, Tibi. Welcome everyone. And um, so what are we going to talk today? Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Um, today, we're going to focus on a, uh, a couple of partners that are actually providing a SaaS solution to their customers. Um, so in the previous episodes, we've had a uh, focus on um, uh, something like a more like an enterprise customer, which created their own solution and they serve their own internal customers. Now we're going to look at a a uh, set of customers that are actually creating this um, SaaS-like offering for their customers. But to make that happen, they have uh, they need to have the platform in place, they need to have the solution on top, and they need to make all of these things work as well as create a, a development environment where they can build things. But I don't want to get too much into details on this. Um, I'll let uh, Julian and Dino go into these details and uh, take it from here. Okay, I'm here with Julian from Knowledge Park. Hi, Julian. Uh, can you introduce yourself a little bit and your company you're working for? Hi, Thomas. Yes. So I'm working for Knowledge Park since 2011. We have a patient management system for dialysis in Germany. My field of action is the medical application management, infrastructure and operations, and Azure and Azure Stack. Okay, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. I sounds so, sounds like a very good job there. Um, can you tell me a little bit? Um, I mean, we have you on the show uh, for Azure Stack Partner Solutions, right? Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, your Azure Stack Hub integration, your Azure Stack Hub solution, your offering? Yes, of course. So we have two Azure Stack Hub All Flash systems from the hardware vendor Dell. We run them in two data centers of Aquinet. And together with, uh, with the Azure Stack Hubs, we also have uh, an object store fr from Cloudian in three data centers to store large data for, for long-term ter purposes. And um, our, our business need for, for the, the Azure Stack solution is that we need to run cloud services on-premise because we need a data so sovereignty uh, at all times. Um, in our in our own data centers to meet our compliance requirements. Um, today we are running very business critical systems um, on the two Azure Stack hubs. Um, we are running over 200 dialysis centers all over Germany on our two stems. And uh, today uh, we we treat patients um, like 18,000 chronic patients in a quarter, and almost 80,000 in and out patients. Okay, so you're basically offering uh, like really like the cloud services we get with Azure Stack Hub, this um, like uh, consistent experience we offer with that, but that really helps you to bring that into your own data centers, right? Is that, that what you're saying? Yeah, that's the point, exactly. Okay, so I know that you're working in the healthcare space in Germany. Um, can you explain me a little bit more about um, what are you doing and actually how Azure Stack Hub uh, helps you uh, in that specific case? Yeah, of course. So we, as, as I mentioned before, we have a patient management system for dialysis in Germany. So it's a, it's a 10, year, 10 year old grown monolith. And uh, now we have the need to transform it to new microservices. So we had a look at the market and we were, we were trying to figure out what, what is the best platform for our for our needs, so our our uh, our um, what 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 we're trying to do is we we take the monolith apart, build new microservices, and we want to to offer the services as software as a service in health in the healthcare market in Germany. Okay, so you're building these uh, kind of like you're modernizing these traditional applications to more cloud kind of like cloud native and modern SaaS applications uh, if you will on top of azure stack right right 
So what we what we try to achieve or, or what we achieved is that we we now use infrastructure as a service and infrastructure as a code, as well as uh, as ARM templates. Um, so we can we can standardize uh, standardize our our infrastructure in terms of code. So this this is this is interesting because I like the part where you said like infrastructure as code and ARM templates, and I know that many of our customers obviously come from the Azure space and they know that they can use the Azure Resource Manager templates uh, to deploy infrastructure and services on Azure. Um, but like you can also use them on Azure Stack Hub, right? So you can exactly use the same same deployment mechanisms. Um, interesting. So. Can you tell me a little bit more how you're using these ARM templates and, and how you're like actually deploying uh, to Azure Stack Hub? Yeah, of course. So we are, what, what we are doing is um, we, we use the, the, the ARM templates together with uh, Azure DevOps. We write our infrastructure into templates and code and we deploy them either per script or we deploy them with with build pipelines. Okay, that that is pretty cool. So that would give you the flexibility to basically, basically as as you, as other customers do, or as you also probably also do, to use Azure DevOps to do use these Azure DevOps processes to deploy the whole infrastructure to Azure. You're using the same process and the same uh, tools to also do that um, with your Azure Stack Hub environment. Right. Now that's pretty cool. So. As far as I understand, you're building the solution on top of your Azure Stack environment. You're really doing the modernization of the application and building these um, modern SaaS solutions. Um, but there's also a side where it's about operations and um, about operating the Azure Stack. Do you have any help with that? Yes, we do. So to to be successful in our, in our project and uh, that we can focus on on software as a service. We have a we have a partner, and um, our partner is is Bordonaro IT in Germany, and they are doing the operations as a service for us. Okay, so they are taking care of your environment. So I think that is great. Thank you very much, Julian, for sharing this. We are switching over and let's talk to Dino about how they are actually helping to architect and operate an Azure Stack Hub environment. Uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but before we switch over to uh, to, to, to Dino, I uh, just wanted to add uh, one thing. Uh, as uh, Julian's team sort of started to to work uh, with with these stamps and to to to, to build a solution on top, uh, he also needed a way to uh, um, have a um, visibility across all these stamps and understand their usage and that sort of thing. Um, and he came together with, uh, he put together this uh, dashboard. Um, so it's actually uh, using a combination of things from PowerShell to Prometheus to Grafana to actually build this view across all the, the, the stems. Um, if you want to, to learn more about this, uh, Julian actually has a very nice um, uh, set of articles uh, that describes how these are uh, put together and describes uh, how you can uh, go through uh, something like this if you're interested and uh, actually set one up for um, yourselves. Okay, so I'm here with Dino Bordonado from Bordonado IT and you helped uh, Julian with their Azure Stack Hub platform uh, for actually Knowledge Park and the Equinit uh, Health Service. Can you explain me a little bit more uh, who you are, what your company does, and how you actually helped Julian uh, operating and architecting the Azure Stack uh, solutions. Sure. Hi, Thomas. Yeah. So my name is Dino Bordonaro. I'm in IT for more than 25 years now, coming from classic hosting, data center and outsourcing. And my company transformed a couple of years ago to cloud platform. And this is why we changed our company name to MultiCloud Experts, which means we are on Azure Stack Hub as well as Azure for a lot of years. Azure Stack Hub started on, on technical preview free. And since this, we are on the boat and love the product. And we specialized on two different business areas. One of it is the operator as a service role to keep the trust and pain away from the customer to learn how to operate infrastructure in the right way. And the second part, 
now that we know what infrastructure needs the customer has, it makes a lot of sense that we also offer the support um, on the platform on top tenants as well as the consulting service and help the customer build awesome edge solution and most of the time even hybrid, which are bridged to uh, public Azure. And this is what, what my company, we are um, 25 people located in Speyer in Germany, and we have customers all over Europe and even some uh, outside Europe. And we love what we do. Uh, that's awesome. No, I, I, I remember, I think that is also why I know you such for such a long time is because you were very early involved with Azure Stack, or well, was it called back then and now Azure Stack Hub. And I think you also are Microsoft MVP awarded for your work you do with Azure and Azure Stack Hub. So that's absolutely great. Um, you mentioned that you're basically operating, the, the, that one of your offerings is operating um, Azure Stack Hub, and, but also architecting integration and solutions. Can you explain me a little bit what that means and what the differences are? Yes, sure. This means um, that at the end of the day, the customer have consistency across his platforms. So when we build the platform for the customer, we have a turnkey solution. We work close with OEMs, like in this case, Dell Technologies. So we hand over the platform to the customer. And in Julian's case with infrastructure, it was just brainless for him. He could just use the same code. He started to work in public Azure on their proof of concept and run it against the Azure Stack Hub platform and then transform from there his classic infrastructure from VMware with a lift and shift to the, in first place, Azure Stack Hub standard platform and then we started to leverage all these new possibilities like AKS engine, Kubernetes and everything around it to start to, to, to cut the old monolith solution in slices and we help them to find the best way and path um, step by step in different milestones to transform their future version of the software on the same platform as they were used to um, use already in a public cloud and that, that's the awesome thing about Azure Stack it's just out of one hand, a first party solution that comes from Microsoft to your data center. And it's not, uh, uh, I run it on premises or I run it in Azure's public, uh, public data center. It's, a, it's, it's beside, you can build very amazing, cool stories around these platforms. And this is what we try to use there, for example. Um, we also had a couple of cool additional projects where we use Azure front door to get traffic in and then pump the traffic over express route to the Azure Stack hubs. So the, the, the very important high secure data is stored on the hubs and the CDNs and the static data and, and the websites are all hosted on public Azure. So you have the cost and uh, technology of best, the best, the best in bread of both worlds. So you keep the costs down by using these easy servers in public cloud and you have the high secure self-hosted platform with Azure Stack Hub, but both are used in the same way with the same CI CD pipelines, the same uh, source codes and the same uh, processes like you would use the public cloud. You can just switch to the private cloud with a, with a, a snip of your finger by changing some settings in a JSON file and that's it. No, I, I think I love that. You just you just brought like all that together. What I love about hybrid, like when it comes down to like leveraging hybrid cloud environments, right? You get, you take the advantage of the cloud services, which you can run in Azure, but also as you mentioned, like on Azure Stack Hub itself, and then you build them together and take advantage, okay, let's say, hey, uh, these services can actually run in the public cloud and we can take advantage of it but then at the same time, the data, which for example, we have regulations in place where it just doesn't allow us uh, to store data somewhere else, um, we can actually keep them inside and we can still use the same tooling with Azure DevOps, the same, the same experience with Azure Resource Manager templates. Uh, so I, I really uh, think that is fantastic. And again, you brought it to the point uh, how awesome that all of that can work together. Now, um, maybe you have time like to explain me a little bit how um, you helped with that solution and what your part uh, was to uh, working with, with Julian on this um, and what you actually still provide like as a service for them. Yeah, sure. So as of today, we run both um, of the Azure Stacks day and night in a 24-7 um, shift 
model with our team. So we take care about the whole platform, like alerts, like patch and update, marketplace management, but even uh, when it comes to resource planning for the future. So um, we look with every customer that we onboard or with every project that we onboard, what are the res resources we use today? We, we run the numbers, what are the resource usage maybe in six or 12 months from now, we make a capacity planning with the customer also as a service. We help um, when it gets to um, finding problems in ARM templates, debugging these, but as well as uh, we are trusted advisor and, and jump in every time Julian has a question about what is the best way to store my ARM templates? How should I structure my, my repositories for infrastructure as code? Should we jump to Terraform instead of ARM, for example? And we do very cool stuff around this. and. And we also test a lot of third-party solutions. Like, for example, we had a business need SQL Server cluster uh, in a high availability setup. Um, and, and SQL clusters produce a, a lot of traffic if you set up them wrong. So we, we, already, we also put in some data platform MVPs and help, got help from there to set up these clusters behind these medical systems and some other systems which don't have the technology for high availability. We use it as a, as a um, third party solution from Carbonite called availability and replicate data from one stem to the other and, and can switch over in a, in a couple of minutes from one region to the other region without almost any data loss, which, which brings like some kind of Hyper-V replica or, or Azure Zype recovery functionality which is not there yet um, to the stems by third party solutions. So my job is also to watch the market and always have the best solution. So if there's no first hand solution from Microsoft, we use Carbonite. If there's tomorrow, for example, Azure Site Recovery, I go to Julian and say, let's evaluate it, make a proof of concept and switch again back to the Microsoft way of doing it um, correct on this product. And I, I see myself as a, how do you call it? Maybe some kind of guardian angel for the customer. Uh, as a customer success manager, however you want to call it, but I'm responsible that Julian can can get his, his his job done, and I bring in a lot of experience about this. And I would another part of this job is also um, the friendship. You spend so many days, weeks, and months together that also this relation here ended up in a in a very deep friendship by working over one and a half years on solution. And this is what makes it very cool. So I love the project. I love. The, the employees, I love everything around it. And and when you work together that close and, and you get friends in this, the, the quality that gets out of such a project is just amazing. And by paying from operating the infrastructure platform, and, and you know it as well as me, like what a magic Azure Stack Hub is. Yeah? We come from days where we had Hyper-V with a system center and an Azure pack on top of it. So this was a full-time job for many people just to orchestrate and keep the platform up and running. And this is just out of the box by Microsoft at almost no cost compared with earlier days with much more functionality. So it's just amazing to have this turnkey cloud in your own data center. No, I, I love what you're just saying. Again, um, this is, this is, I think it's really key and you brought up the word trusted advisor. I, I really like that. I think uh, if, if, if the world getting increasingly complex, right? And especially IT environments getting increasingly complex to deal with all uh, these traditional applications, but then also very modern applications and then across different environments, you need to have some sort of a trusted advisor which can help you uh, to solve your challenges. And I, Again, I, I really like fascinating with all the work work you're doing. Um, and now this is like really, I was thinking about this for a long time to ask you that question is, uh, what would be like your key, to way, key takeaways when you're working or when you start working uh, with a customer? What is like, what are the most important things when you do a project, not just an Azure Stack Hub project, but like an Azure hybrid project in general? Key takeaways, actually are that in such projects when it comes to Azure Stack Hub and, and bringing the application to Azure Stack Hub, if you do it right, you should be on the side of the customer and helping the customer take good decisions. Like for example, the, the way Julian came to me was like, hey, we have this requirement for an on-prem cloud platform and um, we had offers from various OEMs and OEM one says we need HDDs, the other says, we need SSDs, the next says we need a hybrid, and I'm more than confused. I have the budget, and I have to, to keep the budget um, very structured and, and low, as always, because everyone wants to spend as little as possible. But he was just not uh, in a situation 
situation where he knew what is right and what is wrong and, and who is telling the truth and who just want to do a sale. And so it was very, uh, very clear that I sit beside my customer and, and take the decision like I would have the rest of the money myself. And then from there on, we took over and, and jumped to all these uh, um, challenges we had with the project. And everything was from, from, from day one, from the feeling like I'm one of Julian's employees or colleagues. So my key takeaway is also on, on, on second part, uh, the second part of it is that you need to add, bring all the people on the table. So like when you run traditional infrastructure, you have the silos, you have the networking guys, you have the storage guys, you have the firewalling guys, you have the infrastructure guys, you have the whatever guys, the SQL server guys. And in these hybrid projects, when it comes to infrastructure as code and software defined networks, you need to have everyone on one table and you, have, you need to, to break the, the, the borders between these teams teams because it's not five single teams and silos anymore. It's one big team and it's very, very important that they speak with each other. So you have to, to break out uh, these, these, these silos and, and help the people to talk actually to each other. You're in some way, from every perspective, you're, you're in the middle as the trusted advisor for almost everyone. And in our case, it was very, very uh, helpful that we run data centers for more than 15 years now. So we can be friends with almost every one of the silos, which which makes it very easy then to get a connection to the people and, and get their concerns because a lot of people that run classic infrastructure, they have no idea how, how this cloud platform works, but to, to get not vulnerable uh, and, and, and from, from some concerns they have, they don't, they don't even try to ask how does this work, is it secure and whatever, they just say, I don't want it. I, I'm just afraid it's it's new and I don't want to learn something new. And for this, they think it's no good choice of technology. And when you then get into talks with these people and you, you hear, for, for example, like the networking guy says, this is dangerous. So it most dangerous is just I'm concerned to lose my job. You need to talk to the people, make them clear that the jobs change, the roles change, you get different responsibilities, you give some work to others but you get more work from others so there's enough work for everyone but probably the role changes somehow but there's nobody kicked out of, of a job because of a cloud platform this is not nothing i've ever seen and 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 this is what i want to say you need to be one the trusted advisor and in many cases and you need to communicate communicate with all the silos and people and then you're doing a great job no, I, I, I agree with that. And I have seen it many, many times where you have these silos, right? And you can just not do a project um, with having these silos and different teams which are not really collaborating together. Um, and I, I think that is a great experience. Also what you can bring as with your personal experience when you work with a customer actually to tell them how not just in technology wise they need to bring stuff together, but also how they should organize uh, their teams to make this a success, right? I think that is also a very, very important part um, of, your, of your company. Yes. So you mentioned before uh, you want to talk a little bit about the COE, which you are part of, right? Yeah, actually, um, the COE is uh, a very cool project that Tibi and I thought about. And um, where it comes from is, is very simple. So you have, in many cases, the ISVs with their software they want to bring to the Azure Stack marketplace, but as well as um, you have customers who want to do a proof of concept. And to get speed in this project and to not spend a lot of time on structure requirements that I just mentioned, we talked to Dell Technologies and we've built this Microsoft um, Center of Excellence powered by Dell Technology, which is basically a full-blown state-of-the-art eight-node Azure Stack hub system with, with the large configuration, with whatever you can have. We, have, we run 100G network on top of it. We run 40 net firewalls and we are directly connected to the Frankfurt internet um, D6 uh, um, carrier, which means we have a super fast connectivity. When I say super fast, I'm also talking about peering to Microsoft Azure. So we peer the German Azure, uh, Azure regions with two to three milliseconds of latency, which is almost like they sit beside our Azure Stack Hub and we um, use the COE now for, as validation as a service for a couple of um, very cool software vendors to validate their solutions, to bring workload like VDI to Azure Stack Hub, not only to Azure. And me and TB helped them actually to get their 
their software validated and get the marketplace filled up. But we also help others to to solve their problems. So we make it very easy for the, for those people to onboard, get a subscription and test their solution. And this is what we want to achieve to say, Azure Side Cup is an awesome product. Believe us and, and test it, touch it, try it and love it. This is, this is the idea behind it. And um, that said, Microsoft does a lot of things to make this process even better. And like I said, with the operator role um, already, so even Microsoft now has cool projects for ISVs and SIs in place. And we are one of the first five of the first wave of these SI partners in a preferred partner state. So this gives us also from Microsoft a very cool label like saying, Bordonaro IT in Germany is one of these preferred partners with all the requirements like dedicated stuff on Azure Stack Hub. And with the, we help others bring the solution to the Azure Stack hub system in our data center, which is the COE. And if someone wants to test the solution, everyone is welcome. Contact me, talk, contact TV, contact Thomas. We can help you uh, overnight. <laughs> no, this is great. I think this that, that sounds really great. I think we will need to have a separate discussion on this. Uh, and I think we definitely will. Yes. So with that, uh, I want to quickly ask you, so if people want to know more about uh, you or about the project itself, uh, where should they go? There are two places to go. One is our personal website, which is bordonaro-it.com. The send of X is in the works, which, which everybody also gets his own website. And my own personal blog is also in the works, which is dino.blog, which is super easy to recognize. So um, get there, ping me, ping me on LinkedIn on Twitter. So my Twitter handle is at Dino Bordonero. The same for LinkedIn, the same for Facebook. Just contact me on every channel you want. I'm always glad to help as an MVP. Community is my world. So if someone needs help, has questions about Azure Stack Hub, we also have our own German meetup, which is called Hybrid Cloud Meetup. You can find it um, in the meetup platform. You can find it on Twitter announcements. So I'm glad for everyone who's interested in the technology and not only about Azure Stack Hub, even Edge and even Hybrid. This is why we call our meetup even um, the hybrid meetup to build awesome solution on the edge, but not only on the edge, it can be hybrid edge and public cloud combined. Oh, that's awesome. So with that, I want to say thank you, Dino. Thank you, Julian, uh, for joining this uh, video. Uh, it was really, I really appreciate uh, what you talked today and uh, how you showed uh, your solutions uh, you built with Azure Stack and the Azure, Azure Stack Hub. Uh, so all of you, thank you for watching and hopefully see you in the next one. Thank you, Thomas. Take care.